Alrighty, everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is your host, ID Chester. We are going to be talking about Dominion. We're going to be doing some tutorial videos. We're going to talk about it. We're going to go through it. We're going to delve into Dominion. So what is Dominion? Well, Dominion is the godfather of all deck building games. Before Dominion, there was no deck building games. Uh, and with Dominion, deck building really took off and created a whole genre of games out there. So uh, whether this is your you haven't played Dominion for a while, you're thinking about maybe pulling it out and trying it out, you're <clears throat> new to Dominion, you just picked it up, or maybe you're looking for something that's a really good game that you think, um, you know, can play with multiple different kinds of people and it might be fun for everyone, this might be the game to look for. So this is going to be the intro video. It's probably going to be very very long and i apologize for that right up front but there's a lot to cover there's a lot to talk about and hopefully i don't miss anything as we go through this we're not going to cover every single thing obviously in one episode but i'm hoping that uh, you will watch this from start to finish it might take you a couple sit you know settings to watch everything but hopefully uh you'll watch it learn from it enjoy it as we go along and uh in the long run the object is for you guys out there to uh, understand more about Dominion and hopefully uh, find something that you might like out of it and give it a try. Uh, the original Dominion game came out in 2006, 2006, 2008, something like that. Uh, so it's been out for quite a while. And of course, they have tons and tons of expansions. In this episode, we're going to be specifically talking about just the base game. This is just the base game, nothing fancy. When you start buying some of the expansions, you're going to start ending up getting more tokens and more cubes and more coins and uh, more special cards to bring in and all kinds of different boards that you have to use. And, you know, there's all kinds of things that will exponentially expand this game uh, as you get more and more involved in it. So you can see tons and tons of stuff, but depending on which expansions you get and what you're, what you're trying to do with it. So this is just an overview of the base game. We're gonna talk about how to set it up. We're gonna talk about playing your first game. We're gonna talk a little bit of strategy. We're gonna talk about uh, um, you know the different cards. We're going to talk about a lot of things so hopefully like i said it's going to be a long episode but hopefully uh hopefully it'll be well worth it as you watch learn and play and try it out and see what's good about it what's bad about it so i've already had some of them, uh we've already done some other videos on dominion and uh, we played some games we've kind of gone through showed some cards we've talked about the core concepts and blah 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 and a lot of people have messaged me saying, oh, I tried Dominion and it just wasn't for me or I didn't have, you know, I played it a bunch and now I'm done with it. I didn't really find it fun or whatever. But the, the core Dominion, right, the core of Dominion and what you find in the base game is very basic, right? If you want to really delve into and finding lots of cool options, obviously more expansions will give you those more options. Um it's a game where the, uh, st the, the fun of it is trying to outthink and outfigure the game compared to your opponent. And to try and figure out what card's going to help you and what card's going to hurt you. And in the long run, make it so that you can win the game. So, uh, again, we're going to talk about just the base game. Uh, when you start getting into some of the other expansions, you get all kinds of other options and new features and new rules and new new everything. Uh, I would recommend if you do pick up Dominion, you pick up an extra box of the base cards. As you can see, you get a ton of cards uh, when you start buying all the expansions. And you will have plenty of, of what they call the base cards uh, when you start getting the expansions and with the base card set. Uh, but you can always use those cards. You're always going to need them. And uh, for the little bit of money, it's well worth it to get yourself 
an extra set of the base cards because if some of these end up getting, you know, abused or cracked or, you know, just not usable, you have spares to go back to and, and uh, uh, yeah, plenty to use with the rest of your game. So you don't want like a couple cards, just, you know, somebody spills a drink on the table and wipes out a whole bunch of cards. It's not going to be the end of the world. Of course, I would say, why the hell do you have somebody there at the table with something in the drink? But that's just me. <coughs> Excuse me. So Dominion, uh, again, deck building game. Maybe this is your first game. Maybe you haven't played it in a while, whatever. You got the base game. You decided you're going to get it out. You and your wife are going to play it or you and your friend are going to play it or whoever. And uh, you're looking to, you know, I don't want to read through and figure it all out how to do it. So what do you do? All right, so let's get into setup, right? So setup, what you want to do is separate your coppers, your silvers, your golds, estates, duchy, provinces, your curses. You should have a, a little trash card as well. You might have a trash board, actually. Uh, if you ended up buying one of the expansions, it actually comes with the trash board. I can't find mine, wherever it is. Uh, and then you're going to keep your other cards stacked up in groups so all all of your cards are together in one handful and you're going to keep your other cards you're going to have lots of extra cards uh that you're going to keep and anything else that you have just set aside for right now for a two-player game two-player game you're always going to play with copper you're always going to play with silver. You're always going to play with gold. You're always going to play with the states, duchies, provinces, curses, and trashes. Now, how many you play with, that will be depending on how many people you're playing with. If you're playing with two people, two people and only two people, you're going to include eight copies of estates, duchies, and provinces. Eight copies of each. Again, I'm setting up a basic two-player game here. If you're playing with three or four people, you're going to keep 12 copies of each. If you're playing with five people, you're going to play with 15 copies of each. And if you're playing with six people, you're going to keep 18 copies of each. So depending on how many players you're going to have, you're going to do, um, it's going to tell you how many copies of each of the estates, duchies, provinces that you will have. Curses are a little bit different. Uh, you get 10 uh, for every player past the first player. So if you're playing with a two-player game, you're going to end up with 10 curses. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If you're playing with three people, you're going to end up with 20 curses. If you're playing with four people, 30 curses. Five people, 40 curses. Six people, 50 curses. So it's 10 um, for each person past the first. So with two-player game, it's just going to be 10 curses. It's going to be eight of each of these cards. And then you're going to keep your core silver gold cards. And then the copper, uh, you're going to put those in a pile. And then what you're going to do is you're going to shuffle, or you're going to give out seven copper and three estates to each player. That's every player's starting hand. Seven copper, three estates. And they're going to have a hand of 10 cards. Every player will have the exact same cards in their hand. So this is basically a race game where you're trying to get the most victory points at the end. So the player with the most victory points at the end, if it is a tie in victory points, if it's a tie in victory points, then it's the player who took the least amount of turns uh, that wins. So, uh, that's kind of an important rule because we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, so, if this is the first player and this is the second player, if the first player ends up uh, with, say, 20 turns and the game ends, and this player only had 19 because he hasn't gone yet, and they end up with the same amount of victory points, then player two wins. And that's an important aspect that a lot of people kind of over... Uh, gloss over because they don't understand a lot of the ins and outs. Uh, I kind of think of Dominion 
as a thinking man's chess game because you're trying to do the same thing you do in chess. So if you enjoy chess, you might like Dominion because it's a thinking man's game. There's a lot of strategy that you don't really see right up front. It's just simply, oh, I'm buying cards, I'm playing cards, I'm trying to get all the big point cards, and that I should win, and and that should be it. But that is true, but you have to take a lot of other things into consideration. How do you get to get the big cards? How? What's the fastest way for you to do that? Uh, do you get rid of your bad cards in your hand? and try to get better cards? Or do you just buy bigger, better money cards? Or how, how do you get from point A to point B is, is what I'm saying. So it's a kind of a race game. Uh, and the way the game ends is when uh, you're gonna play with 10 kingdom cards out here. Let's just put out 10. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So let's just assume that these are our kingdom cards for that we're playing with in this game. So the game will end in one of two ways. Here's our 10 kingdom cards there. So you're always going to play with copper, silver, gold, estates, duchies, provinces, curses, and trash. And then you're going to play with 10 random cards. We're going to go through what that means here in a minute. But the game ends when three piles get emptied. So you can see each one of these cards is normally going to have 10 cards in it. So if I look at Artisan, you can see if I get all the Artisan's cards out, there's going to be 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 of these cards. Right? So you're going to have basically a stack of 10 of all these cards. So the game ends when three of these piles, all these piles count. So if curses are empty and the chapel is empty and the silvers are empty, then the game ends. So three piles, no matter what pile it is, if there's three empty piles, then the game ends. The second way it's going to end is when your province pile is gone. Doesn't matter if any of the other piles are gone or not, as soon as your provinces are gone, you're going to count up your victory points and see who wins. And if it's a tie, it's whoever took the least amount of turns wins. Uh, uh, the game will immediately end when the last person buys this card, by the way. So you don't get to continue your next turn. Uh, you know, if player one wins it, player two doesn't get into like a final turn or anything. It's immediately over. So that's an important uh, point as well because there is a lot of strategy about when and how you actually buy these victory point cards. So there's two, basically in basic, basic dom dominion, there's two resources. You have ducats or just think of ducats as money, right? So there's money resources, one, twos, and threes. And then there are victory points, which have got the shield icon. And this comes in one and three and six. The cost to purchase cards is located in the bottom left-hand uh, corner of the cards. And I'm actually going to put this back over there so I don't mess that up. And like I said, you're going to randomly determine what cards you're going to play with. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that here right now. Uh, so you're always going to play with 10 kingdom cards, but it'll be random. Now the base dominion comes with 26 different kingdom cards. 26. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 26. So there's 26. These are not cards that go on to the stack of 10s. And the reason is you can see the back of these cards have got a purple or blue background as opposed to these which have a gold background these are your randomizer cards with the purple so you're going to separate your purple cards from all your gold cards most of your cards will be gold all these are going to be gold most of your cards will be gold back in fact all of these cards are going to be gold back and all these cards are going to be gold Right. The only cards that are not gold back are these cards. And these are your randomizer cards. 
And what you're going to do with randomly determined, you can do you can do it however your group or you and your uh, significant other or you and your friend decide to do it. You can pick one. He can pick one. You go back and forth or you can just randomly de- shuffle these cards up, shuffle these up and then draw 10 of them. You can draw 15 of them and then each player gets to remove a card and then with the 11 cards left, you can shuffle them all together and then pull one out randomly and that's the card that you don't play with. I mean, there's a million ways to do it. In fact, if you go in the back of the book, there's actually specific sets that they recommend you play with. If it's your first game, they recommend these. If it's your, if you want to, to learn some more mechanics, there's one called Size Distortion. There's one called Top Deck. There's one called Sleight of Hand. There's one called Improvements. There's one called Silver and Gold. It also has decks recommended upon which of the expansions you have. So if you have a Dominion and Intrigue, it recommends these three. If you have Dominion and Seaside, it recommends these three. If you have Dominion and Alchemy, it recommends these three. And so in the back of the rule book, we'll give you some options. So it doesn't matter. However you want to do it, uh, you're going to just, like I said, you're going to get seven copper, three estates, which is going to give each player ten cards. And they're going to be three victory point cards. And there's going to be seven money cards. So obviously what you want to do during your turn is you're going to play your your cards. You're going to buy better cards, hopefully. And make your deck bigger and better and stronger. And then eventually you're going to buy the bigger and better victory point cards. And once the game ends by three piles disappearing... Or the last province is bought, then the game ends. Everyone counts up their (coughs) victory points. And whoever has the most victory points in their hand wins the game. If it's a tie, player who took the least amount of turns wins. All right. uh, So let's go through and show you. Let's talk about the basic cards. Shall we talk about the basic cards now? I think probably talk. Let's talk about the basic cards. So again, this is basic Dominion two-player setup. If you have three players, you're going to have 12, 12, 12. If you have four players, 12, 12, 12. Five players, you're going to have 15, 15, 15. If you have six players, 18, 18, 18. Curses, two players, 10. If you have three players, it's 20. If you have four players, it's 30. If you have five players, it's 40. Six players is 50. So it's always 10 for every player past past the first player. Uh, There will only be one trash spot. So trash is used when you trash your cards. Uh, So so if there wasn't any, let's just say there wasn't any cards, right? Let's say there was no kingdom cards out there. Let's just show you how the basic gameplay would be, right? So you're going to shuffle up your deck, right? Oops. You shuffle up your deck and you draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. The other five just go down, face down. You flip up your cards and you're going to end up having these cards. You can't do anything with. You can't purchase anything with them. They have cost value down here, but they have no money. They just have victory points at the end of the game. In this case, I have two money to buy something. So I could buy a copper, which costs zero. I can buy. I can't buy a silver, which costs three. I can't buy a gold, which costs six. I could buy an estates, which costs two. A duchy costs five. A province costs eight, and a curse by zero. But a curse is minus one victory point. So why would you buy that? No sense in buying it, right? Another important aspect to look at is you will always, always, always run across one of two situations. You will either have a 5-2 combination, and what I mean by 5-2 is you will be able to have 5 purchasing power and 2 purchasing power. That is option number 1, which doesn't happen very often, but it can. The second option is five. what they call the 4-3 combination so you're going to have one hand with three 
and the next hand is going to be four. So you're going to have, you're either going to have a five two combination, or you're going to have a three four combination. You always will have that in your first hand. It's the only two choices you're going to end up with is either five two, or three four. So if I am player A, right? If I'm player one, I know that I'm going to have five five purchasing power in that hand because I only have two in this hand. If I was to draw this instead, I'm going to know I have three purchasing power and then there's going to be four purchasing power in here. You know this, right? You absolutely know this so you can plan what you're going to spend your money on this turn and what you're going to spend your money on next turn. So obviously with three money, I could buy a silver which costs three, right? And then I could take all my cards and put them in my discard pile and I would draw five more cards. Player number two would then go, and he's got three, and he can buy a silver, and he would put all of his cards in the discard pile, and he would draw. And that's the basic gist of what you do. Now, obviously, that's what you would do if there is nothing out there besides money and victory points. So the only thing you would really buy is a bunch of money, get enough money so you can buy the better cards, and then try to do that quicker than your opponent. That's pretty much what you're going to be doing with the uh, regular game with kingdom cards down here. But you have to figure out how are the kingdom cards going to help you or hurt your opponent get from point A to point Z the fastest and best way, right? So it's time to look at what these cards do so you can make, so you can understand what they do and how they do it. So your basic premise is the rule for Dominion is A, B, C. Just remember A, B, C. It's very simple. A, B, C. A is action, which means you can play a card that has the word action down here at the bottom. You can play one card that has action on it. So if you had multiple cards that had action, you could choose which one of those you were going to play. So if I had three of these cards and say two copper in my hand, I could only choose to play one of these three cards. I can choose not to play any of them, but I could only play one action, right? So that's A is action. You play one action, right? Your second thing is B, which is buy. You get to buy one card one action one card you buy a card based upon how much money you have that's why your five two or four three combination is so important because you know that you're going to have a certain amount of money to spend on your first turn and your second turn so there's no sense in buying for example it what's this say for example there was merchants out there and there was say militia out there and there will be 10 of these cards out here, but just for example, I'm going to show you this. So if I was to draw a hand that had, uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? All right, this is the way I want to do it. So I, I draw a four purchasing power, two victory points. I know what's left in this hand. It's three purchasing power and two, uh, one estates. So, uh, oh, I have to do it this way. <laughs> you only get five cards, dude. There you go. So, I drew four copper and an estates. I know in this hand is going to be three coppers and two estates. So, if I have four purchasing power, I don't want to buy a merchant with my four purchasing power that costs three uh, because my next hand... I only get three purchasing power. I can't buy this card for four. So it makes much more sense if I have four money and I want to buy a militia and I want to buy a merchant, I spend the four on the militia and then the next hand, I buy three with the merchant. Same thing with the five, two combination. If you have five, if you draw five, two, which again, doesn't happen as often, but it can happen. 
Let's see if I can get. Oh, uh, nope. Here, we drew a 5 2 combo. So I have five in this hand. The next hand, I'm only going to have two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan the board to find out if I have any five cost cards out there that I want to buy. Right? And any two cost cards. So you can see, cost of two, cost of four, cost of three, cost of five. If I have five money to spend, it doesn't make sense for me if I want to buy a moat and a mine to buy the moat with this hand because I know I'm going to have two next time. So I might as well buy the moat next time. I could buy anything cheaper than five. I don't have to buy something that costs five. I could buy a silver that costs only three gold. I could buy this militia that costs four gold. It doesn't. You know, you only get one purchase as long as you have enough money for it. All right. Now, cards, uh, your kingdom cards are going to cost two, three, four, five, six. Some of the expansions get more expensive, but only in base dominion. We're talking about just base dominion. I think it goes from two to six is the amount of money. The more money they cost usually the better card they have and the better um you know ability they give you but it all depends again upon how the cards interact with one another as things go so as we talked about um you might think oh this card really good right it's a militia card it gain every other player discards down to three cards so it's actually in a action card and an attack so you might go oh i'm gonna buy this card right and then your next hand comes up you go buy another one and then you shuffle them up and you're right i'm shuffling them up and i'm drawing my five and then my next time i buy another one right if i let's say i, I had enough money i buy another one and then i get another hand of five cards right Ooh, and then i can attack my opponent and i got four money i'm gonna buy another one of these cards right and eventually, one, two, you keep buying these militia cards because, man, I'm just going to keep my opponent dra drawing, discarding down to three cards. Here's the problem with that is, again, oh, we're going to attack my opponent, and he's going to discard down, and this time I'm going to buy another militia, right? And, ooh, and then one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to draw another hand. Oh, okay, I'm going to play a militia. Oh, wait a minute. I got two militias in my hand. Uh-oh. I can only play one of them, right? Oh, uh, well, what's going to happen now? I can only play one of these. So this is kind of a dead card now in my hand because I bought too many cards that conflict with one another. And they don't support one another. And sometimes that's a good strategy, but most of the time it's not a great strategy in the long run because you're not... You're not able to play all the cards that you're buying. So instead of buying this card, you could have bought something else for four gold that might have been able to help your deck even better. So this is uh, cards, what they call terminal draw, which means uh, when it's in your card hand, it doesn't give you any other actions to play. Merchant, on the other hand, is a little bit different. You can see on this card, it gives you an extra card and an extra action. So if I had, say, well, it's just for, I'm just going to grab all 10 of them and put them in my deck so I can have a couple of them show up in my hand. Let's say throughout the game, I keep buying these cards over and over and over and over and over again. And you know, I'll show you how this works. All right? Oops. So I shuffle up my deck, draw my one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and I didn't draw any. Unbelievable. All right, so I would play my three, and maybe I would buy a silver. Then my opponent would play, and then would come back to me. Five. And then his turn is done. Now it's back to me, and I go, oh, I'm going to play a merchant, which allows me to draw a card, and I get an action accident. Okay, cool. And then I get to play a merchant, which gives me plus one card and another action. Oh, cool. Hey, guess what? I get to play a merchant, which gives me plus one card and plus one action. Oh, cool. Hey, look. I get to play a card, and it gives me plus one card, plus one action. Oh, cool. 
hey, look, I get to play a card that gives me plus one card, plus one action. Cool. You can see these are non-terminal cards because it allows me to, to play another card and it gives me another action. You have certain cards that don't do that. So how you go about building your deck for different combinations is super important to how you get from point A to point Z the fastest and the best. Uh, so let's look at some of the cards now that you kind of understand the basic flow of the game and you kind of understand what you're doing. We're going to look at some of the cards so we can talk about how they actually play. All right. So what we're going to do here is, uh, uh, let's see here. Actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try and bring out my other camera, which might make things a little easier. We'll see. Although this camera is a piece of doo-doo. <clears throat> but uh, if I can get it close up, it might help you guys. As opposed to like way back zoomed out level. <sighs> Let's see. Do I have this camera already in display? No. Let's add, let's add video capture device, sure. Huh. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Let's try this again. Mm -hmm. USB camera, no. That's not the right one. I don't know. All right, maybe we'll just uh, we'll just have to go with uh, no discard the changes. Discard. Thought I had my other camera in here, but no. Oh, here it is. All right, so I do have it. All right. All right, so we're going to look at these alphabetically, which might help somebody out there. I don't know, but we'll see. Alphabetically, we'll look at the cards. So, card number one. And if I could get rid of the glare, that would even be better. All right. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is, because this camera is such a piece of shit. Uh... I'm going to just use my normal camera and bring it down here and get rid of this one. All right, here we go. All right, so first card in the base set. Again, we're talking about just the base set with uh, basic cards. Again, you're going to have a lot more options, a lot more things, a lot more interesting choices more expansions but everything is built upon understanding the core concept so this card is called artisan down in the bottom right hand corner i'm sorry bottom left hand corner you can see it costs six so pretty expensive card uh and it is an action you gain a card to your hand costing up to five put a card from your hand onto your deck so what does that mean? Well, that means you're going to take a card from the supply that costs up to five. So the mine costs five, this costs three, this costs four, this costs two, silver costs three, gold is six. That's an important number to remember. Three, six, and then duchy is five, and province is eight. So those are kind of your big, your big ticket items for just normal base money, money, three, six, and for victory points is five, eight. So why, why would I not just buy a duchy? Because it's worth three victory points. Well, you could, because you can get a card in your hand that costs up to five. 
and then you're going to put a card from your hand on your deck. So uh, you're going to gain a card and put it in your hand. And then uh, you're going to take a card from your hand and put it on your deck. So uh, let's let me show you what that would look like if you're right. So we had one, two, three, four. All right. So uh, hmm, where's my? Here it is. Sorry about all the mass confusion here, but. All right, so this was my uh, hand here. I had two estates and I had two coppers and an artisan. And I chose to play my action. I chose to play the artisan, gain a card to your hand costing up to five, and then put a card from your hand onto your deck. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna play that as an action. That card is no longer in your hand. And then you can Get a card that costs up to five and put it in your hand. So we could say, I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take, um, let's see, what would be a good example here? All right, I'm just going to say for, for just ease of use, a merchant, I put it in my hand, and then the card says put a card from your hand onto your deck. So I can choose any one of these cards. It doesn't have to be the card I brought in. I could put this on my deck. I could put this on top of my deck. I could put this on top of it. Doesn't matter. One of these cards is going to go on the top of my deck. That's what it does. It gets you a free card. It costs up to five. And then it allows you to set up your maybe your next hand. If you have, you know, this problem we talked about earlier where maybe you draw, you drew uh, two militia. And you're not going to get to play both of them because you don't have enough actions. Then maybe you can put one of those on the top of your deck. So it can help separate your deck really well. And it can help you. Uh, oh, uh, where's my artisan? It can help you uh, set up your next hand as well. It is expensive, six. And it's the same price as a gold, right? So you can see the difference in the hand would be I wouldn't. If I, if I bought this card earlier in the game that cost six, instead of buying the artisan, which cost six, when this came around, instead of drawing my artisan, I would have draw a gold, which would have given me three, four, five purchasing power, which means I could still buy the merchant, right? I could still buy the merchant, but this time it would go into my discard pile. Uh, and I wouldn't get to discard one of my cards. So you have to decide, is it worth... Is this card going to help me in any way compared to everything else? So that's what the artisan does. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Card number two is the bandit. Oh, now this card is interesting because it is an action and it's also an attack card, which means it is going to attack your opponent in some way. You're gonna gain a gold. Each other player reveals the top two card of their decks trashing to reveal treasure other than copper and discards the rest. So when you play that card, first thing first, gain a gold. So you're gonna take a gold and you're gonna put that in your discard pile. And then every other player is going to reveal the top two cards of their deck. I'm setting something up here. So uh, player two then has got his hand of cards. You played the bandit. So he's gonna reveal the top two cards of his hands. And you're looking for any money except for coppers. If they have any money, you trash that card. So his gold goes in the trash. So he no longer has that. And every other card that you draw, he discards. So you not only did you trash his gold, so he doesn't get that anymore, you now have a militia card that is in his discard pile, which means he won't get to use it for a while until he gets uh, until he has to um, reshuffle. So that's what the... Uh, that is what the bandit does. A very powerful card because it helps you by getting you some nice money. 
and then it hurts your opponent as well. And that's why it is considered an attack card, because it attacks your opponents, hurting them. All right, uh, number, card number three is going to be the Bureaucrat. You're going to gain a silver onto your deck. So when you gain something onto your deck, right, so you're going to gain a silver onto your deck. So on top of your draw pile, that's on top of your deck. Not in your discard pile, not in your hand of cards, on top of your deck. So that's where that on top of deck goes. It says each other player reveals a victory. Uh, let's put that there. Next time I'll buy Key Lab 5, so my life instead of buying you. Okay, do that. Uh, bureaucrat. So uh, it costs 4. It is an action attack, so you're going to be attacking your opponent again. You're going to gain a silver onto your deck. Each other player reveals a victory card from their hand and puts it into their deck. <coughs> or reveals a hand that has no victory points. So uh, you're going to take uh, your opponent, and if he has victory points, three, four, five. Uh, each other player reveals a victory point card. Victory point cards are going to be anything with the green usually has victory at the bottom. Anything with the green background. So I would reveal this card and put it in, put it into their deck. Onto their deck, sorry. So again, they would put it on top of their deck and that would help or hurt them because when they go to draw cards, the next card they're going to draw for their next turn is going to have victory point card, which usually, again, is not what you need when you're trying to get your cards to get better cards. It's not uh, victory point cards, which don't do anything other than score at the end of the game. It's the only thing they do. All right, let's go to the next card. Seller. Cost of two, so one of our cheap cards. It's an action card. Gives you an extra action, and you can discard any number of cards, then draw that many. So, pretty simple there. Um, so, let's see here. Maybe I should just try to do this like this. All right, so uh, one, two, three, four. So I, uh, I drew a hand, I drew my five cards. My five cards are two coppers, two estates, and a seller. Gives me plus one action. And I could then uh, discard any number of cards and draw that many. So what I would do is discard these, which aren't going to do anything for me. And then I could draw two cards. One, two. And because I played this card, it gives me plus one action. I could then play another card that has an action. So I could then play a militia that I just drew because of the seller. So that's how that card works. You just draw cards until you have that many cards. And you're ready to go. All right. Uh, maybe. Hmm. It's just never an easy way to do all this. All right. So we have the chapel. Trash up to four cards from your hand. It only costs two. And it's an action card. Notice it doesn't give you any extra actions. Uh, it's very cheap cost, but it, what it can do is get rid of some of your really poor cards in your hand for free. And trashing them means you're going to take them out and put them in the trash pile over there. So they will be out of your deck. So when you start getting bigger and better cards, um, you can then get rid of your weaker cards. That means you're going to be drawing your more powerful cards more often, right? So that is the chapel. The council room is cost five. It's an action. It allows you to draw four more cards. It gives you an extra buy. So now with this card, I'm going to draw four more cards. 
And with the console room, you're hoping to draw a whole bunch of big money cards because you're going to be able to buy two items. So with your two items <coughs> to buy, and then each other player draws a card. So it gives you uh, a lot of cards, an extra buy, but every other player kind of helps them out by letting them draw a card. Festival cost five. It's an action. Gives you plus two actions. Plus two actions. So if you had uh, two of your cards that don't give you anything, like uh, say a militia and maybe a mine and a festival in your hand, you can play the festival, then you can play the militia, then you can play the mine. Each one of these costs an action, but you get you get one action for the turn, and then you're going to get two actions because of the festival. It gives you an extra buy, and it gives you two extra money to purchase things. So, very well-rounded card. It gives you lots of choices. It gives you lots of things to play with it. It does cost five. That is the festival. Gardens is actually a kingdom card, but you notice, interesting enough, it is also a victory point card costs four to purchase it and it's worth one victory point for every 10 cards you have rounded down so if you have say 25 cards at the end of the game your each one of these is going to be worth two if you have 32 cards it's worth three if you have 49 cards it's worth four you always round down so you want to try to get to 20 30 40 cards so this uh, could be worth, if you say had 30 cards in your hand, each one of these would be worth three victory points at the end of the game, which is the same amount that a duchy is worth. But of course, you're, you're going to have a lot of cards in your hand that are nothing but victory points. It doesn't give you anything other than victory points. Uh, so it doesn't give you any extra purchasing, it doesn't give you any extra money, it doesn't give you any anything. Let's see if I can bring my microphone over a little bit. All right, uh, so that is the gardens. Next card is the Harbinger. So cost three, it's an action card. Harbinger, you get plus one card. You get plus one action. So basically this card... You can play it, and it's going to replace itself, and it's going to give you another action. Look through your discard pile. You may put a card from it onto your deck. So, interesting. You get plus one card and plus one action. So, you're going to draw your card. You're going to get an action, and then you're going to look through your discard pile and put a card onto your deck. Now, you do have to do these in order from top to bottom. So, you can't look through your deck first and put a card on it then draw it, and then play an action. I think you have to play them from top to bottom. So plus one card, plus one action, and then look through your discard pile and put a card from it onto your decks so you can help set up your next hand. And then you have the <coughs> laboratory. It's a five cost action. It gives you two cards and another action. So you play this card, you draw two more cards, and you get to play another action. You have the library. It's a five cost action. And you draw until you have seven cards in hand, skipping any action cards you choose to. You're going to set those side, <coughs> aside and then discard them afterwards. <coughs> so if you uh, play this card, you're going to draw up to seven cards, and then if you, while you're drawing, if you draw an action card, you can set it aside, choose not to put it in your hand, and then put it in your discard pile afterwards. It's up to you. But you notice it doesn't give you any extra actions. So if you play this as your action, drawing an action card is not going to help you unless you play, say, the festival, which gives you plus two actions. So if you play the festival, gives you plus two actions, a plus one buy, and plus two money, and then you play the uh, library afterwards, you can draw seven cards, up to seven cards in your hand, 
and then uh, skipping any action cards. So you can choose whether or not to, because you're going to have one more action left after you play the festival. Your sec first action in the festival is this. You, you have one more action, so you won't have to miss any of these action cards. So that's the library. Market gives you plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy, plus one money, cost five, and it's an action card. Gives you one of everything. A card, an action, a buy, and money. So pretty, pretty well-rounded card. The merchant gives you plus one card, plus one action. So again, it pays for itself. And its special ability is the first time you play a silver this turn, you get plus one money. So when you play a silver, you're actually going to get two from the silver and then one from this card. So you would have three money. So merchants work really well with silver. Then you have the militia. Four cost, action, attack. Gives you plus two money, which is the same cost as the silver. And then each other player discards down to three cards. So if your opponent has five cards or six cards or seven cards in their hand for whatever reason, they got to dr uh, draw down to just three cards. Then you have the mine. You may trash a treasure from your hand, and you gain a treasure to your hand costing up to three more than it. So, the mind is going to allow you to trash a copper, which costs zero, to get a silver. Or you can trash a silver to get a gold, because each one of these are three more than the cost. So you're trashing your weaker cards to get better cards. Or you're trashing your silver, which is a good card, to get an excellent card. So that's what the mine does. Trash a treasure card from your hand. As long as it says treasure down here at the bottom, you could trash it to gain a card that costs up to three more than it. There are a lot of attacking going on, but we haven't seen any way to prevent the attack. Well, here's our first card that actually shows us what we can do about that, and that is the moat. You get plus two cards. It's a cost of two. It's an action reaction. So you get two cards. When another player plays an attack card, so it's got the attack down there, you may reveal this card from your hand to be unaffected by that card. So if he has three attack cards, you can just show the moat. Every time he goes to attack you, he can't do anything to hurt you. And then when you play it on your turn, it's going to give you plus two cards, all for the low, low price of only two gold, or two money. It's not gold, it's money. So that's a way to prevent uh, people from just wrecking your day. The money lender costs four, it's an action. You may trash a copper from your hand for plus three money. So you're getting rid of your poor weak cards and you're getting plus three money which is the same as a gold so you're getting rid of the copper getting rid of your bad card and you're getting the value of a gold card all for the low, low price of four then we have the poacher which gives you plus one action plus one card and plus one money and discard a card per empty supply pile. Again, any of these piles that are out here, whether they're money or victory points or curses or any of your kingdom cards, are all piles. So if any of these are empty, you're going to have to discard a card per empty supply pile. That's what the poacher does. Remodel. Trash a card from your hand, gaining a card costing up to two more than it. So Remodel works really good to trash, say, your gold cards, which cost six. You can trash a gold into a province, which costs eight. You can trash anything. You can trash a moat from two and get a militia for four. So whatever the cost is, you get two higher than whatever card you trash. So if you trash, say, a militia, because your opponent bought a bunch of moats and your militia aren't doing anything, you could trash your militia for four and get a gold for six. So it doesn't matter what card, you're just gonna trash a card from your hand and you're gonna get a cost of, a, you're gonna get a card to cost up to two more than 
whatever the card is you trash. All right. And we have the Century. The Century is a five cost action. Gives you plus one card and plus one action. So you get another card and you get another action to play. Look at the top two cards of your deck, trash and or discard any number of them, put the rest back on top. So again, if you're drawing cards off your discard pile and you draw a gold and an estates, you might say, oh, you know what? I'm going to trash this card because I don't want it. And then I'm going to put this one back on top because I do want the gold. Uh, so you can trash your bad cards and you can keep the good cards or you can end up discarding them. So if I, I could trash my victory point and then I could discard this because maybe I don't want a gold. Maybe I want to play, maybe I want to get one of my action cards. So it gives you a lot to play with there. Look at the top two cards of your deck. You can trash and or discard any number of them and then you're going to put the rest back up on top. So that's what a century does. Then we have the Smithy. Four cost action. Just gives you plus three cards. Nothing else. Just draw three cards. No more actions. No more buys. Just a lot of extra cards to play. And you have the Throne Room. And it's a four cost action. You may play an action card from your hand twice. So if you had, say, the Throne Room and the Smithy... You can play in the throne room as your action and then you can play the smithy for free because of the throne room. You may play an action card from your hand twice and you would play this card twice so you draw three cards and you draw three cards again. Or if you played uh, the throne room and then the money lender, you could trash a copper from your hand for three bucks and then you could trash a copper again from your hand for another three bucks. So it just allows you to play a, an, another action from your card for free twice, which can be super cool, super villain, super uh, neat. And the Vassal, it costs three. It's an action card. It's plus two money, so same as the silver. And discard the top card of your deck. If it's an action card, you may play it. So another way to play another action card for free, discard the top card of your deck. So this would obviously work really good if you knew what was on top aka if i knew that i had a century right where i'm going to be putting cards back on the top of my deck in any order then i could play the vassal afterwards discard the top card of your deck if it's an action card i get to play it so you can see how combinations start start thinking about the way combinations work villages it costs three action. It gives you an extra card and two more actions. You can notice this. I think this is only the second card that's given us plus two actions. There's not a lot of cards that give you two more actions. And this one only costs three. It gives you another card and two more actions. Then we have the witch. It gives you plus two cards and every other player gains a curse. So this is how you start using these curses up if you have the witch. You put bad cards in your opponent's deck. Cost five, it's an action, attack, and each other player gains a curse. And finally, the 26 card in just the base game, Workshop, gain, uh, it's a three cost action, gain a card costing up to four money. So you just gain a card, cost up to four, put it in your discard pile, boom. All right, so that is a overview of the cards that come in the base set. Now I got to reorganize everything. That's not horrible. We'll just leave it like that. All right. So uh, let's just move this out of the way. I don't have enough room for everything as usual. All right. So that is, of course, our randomizer cards. Then uh, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So you have ten. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't add in a bunch of cards into the. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and mine the merchant. M E M I L. That would go in front of this one. That would go behind it, and this one would go on top of that one. All right. Want to keep these organized, but you most certainly want to do that. All right. So again, you have a random. You can uh, randomly determine what cards are going to be included in your your 10 kingdom cards you can pick five and have your opponent pick five you can any way you want to do you can use what's in the book you can uh oh, i'm just going to show you the it's kind of the basic way the kind of the normal way you would take all the randomizer cards for whatever your uh whichever cards you're playing with in this case you would be playing with just the core game or the base game. If you had one of the expansions, you could use those cards as well. We're just gonna shuffle these up. And we're gonna draw 10 of them so that we get a nice random draw. All right. Fortunately, I do have all my cards in organized order. Yay for me. So it shouldn't take us too long. All right. So trying to make sure we don't get like all the B's, all the C's. <laughs> trying to randomize it. Let's see how random it is. Uh, not too bad. Okay. So, uh, with 26 different combinations, you're going to have a lot of different ways to play with just the base game. With 26 different combinations. And of course, exponentially it goes up. If you were to have the base game in one of the major expansions, you would have up to, say, 52 different uh Kingdom cards, you would have 5.3 million different combinations. And if you were to play 100 games of Dominion a day, uh, 100 different Dominion games a day, it would take you over a 1,000 years to play all the different varieties that you can play. Don't believe me? Check it out. If you have Dominion and all 13 expansions, you have 10 quatillion different possible combinations. Which means that is 10 followed by 18 zeros of different combinations that you could play if you had Dominion with all of the expansions. 10 quatillion is a number big enough that most people can't comprehend how big a number that is. It is incredibly big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see what we get. Laboratory workshop, witch, bandit, moat, festival, gardens, village, throne room, and poacher. All right. So we had village, yes. So we're going to get out the 10 cards for the village. We're going to get 10 cards out for the witch. That's these two cards. Workshop. That's these 10 cards. Uh, P would be in here. It's, moat's not in here. Mine, nope. Uh, moat is here, though. We will get the moat out. Uh, 
a throne room. Throne room. And I think every other card is in the first set. A to, A to M cards. So we have the Bandit. We have... Oh, I forgot the Poacher, damn it. All right, we got the Gardens. Now, Gardens, since it's a victory point card... You do the same thing as you do with these victory points. The gardens, you're only going to play eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're only going to play eight of these cards. If you had three or four people, you would play all 12. All right. And we have a festival going on. Make sure I want to make sure I grab all the right cards. And the laboratory. That's festival, that's laboratory, and of course I forgot the poacher. All right, so there is our 10 kingdom cards. We can get these out of here all right so now what I recommend you do when you set them up is you want to set them up uh, Charlie says I love me some Dominion gonna get to gonna get it to the table this weekend nice good to hear so one thing I would recommend you do is you separate your <clears throat> Uh, cards by cost so we have a five we have a five we have a five we have a three I'm sorry a four a four a four oops another five so Let's go there, and then we have a three, three, two. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is our ten cards, and of course the camera because I had to take it down earlier is going to be all off alignment. I'm going to slide these cards back together slightly so I can fit all ten in the screen for you guys. So you have the fives, then the fours, then the threes, then the twos. If there's a six, I would put the sixes in there as well, but. All right, so that is gonna be, so. So that would be your, uh, kind of your basic setup ready to go. You got your cards out there. We looked at the different cards to kind of talk about what they can do, how to how, how they do things and uh, so now this is where the kind of the strategy kind of the fun of dominion comes into play is figuring out with these cards and these cards which are the only cards besides the cards in your hand that you're going to be playing with how do you get more victory points than your opponent is it by just buying money, 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 and then buying up all the provinces before he can get all of his stuff going? Is it by getting tons and tons of cards that give you cards plus actions? Lavatory, plus two cards, another action. Village, plus one card, plus two actions. Poacher, plus one card, plus one actions. Festival, plus two co actions, plus another buy. Throne room, playing an action twice. Is it worth trying to go for the lower cost cards and maybe buying a lot of cards and playing gardens, which allows you to get one victory point for every 10 cards you have? 
So if you can get up to say 30 cards, you could have each one of these is worth 10, uh, three victory points. Um, so lots of different strategies that you can use. Is there a way to damage your opponent? Well, you've got the witch out there, which is an attack. We have the bandit, which is an attack. Fortunately, we do have a reaction card, which prevents those things from happening. So... So I was going to talk about uh, some more strategy here, right? So we kind of talked a little bit about this, right? As the game progresses, you buy things, you put them in your your hand, and then you're going to shuffle, and, and then you're going to be able to use those better cards as the game progresses. But we talked about the way the game ends, is if three of these different piles, all these piles out here, if three of them, not counting the trash pile. Right, trash doesn't count. But any other pile, if you get three of them to disappear, the game is over. Or if the person buys the last province, the game is over. Now, normally when you play a two-player game or maybe a three-player game, usually the way it ends, 99% out of the time is going to be by somebody buying the last province. When you play with more players, there's more chance that Different players will buy more cards, and there's only 10 of each card. So when you play with, say, four people or five people or six people, the chances are 50-50 if it's going to end by the last province or if it's going to end by the last, the third deck being emptied. So the more players you play with, the more chance more decks will get bought out. Less chance if you're only playing with two people you would have to buy, you know, five of these. Your opponent would have to buy five. You'd have to buy five of these. Your opponent would have to buy five. And you'd have to buy five of these, and your opponent would have to buy five. That's a lot of, that's a lot of turns that you're not going to really spend buying stacks of cards. So less players, probably the chance is it's going to be based on the promises. Now, we talked about... So what, what's part of the strategy, right, is when you're playing, you're trying to get the provinces. Let's say player one, right, is going first. He does his thing. Player two, we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, player one buys a province. Boom, right? And now that's in his deck, and it's going. And eventually, player two buys a province, right? So now it's even again because both players start with the same amount of victory points, right? We all know this. So it's still even. So then, you know, back and forth, oh, player one buys another province. And then player two buys another province. And player three, uh, player one buys a province again. Then player two buys another province. Since it's still tied, everything's tied, right? So there's two provinces left, right? Two provinces left, and, the pl and player one can buy one of them, right? And you might think to yourself, why are there estates and duchies when they don't really play as much? Why are these important? There's two provinces left in the deck. And he, player one could buy that province, right? And then if he buys his province, right, there's only one left. He's going to end up even, even, and it's going to be a tie. So, you know, why wouldn't he buy that? Well, the reason he wouldn't buy that, let's say player one buys that, Right? And then player two ends up buying the last one on the very next turn, or the very same turn. So remember what I talked about in the beginning is you add up all your victory points at the end of the game, and whoever is the most wins, except for if it's a tie. If it's a tie, then whoever did it in the least amount of turns is the winner. And since this player was second player, they did it in the same amount of turns, player two wins the game because they were tied in victory points. If this guy would have had one more victory points. The reason I'm going through all this is because it's very important to understand this concept of under, understanding where and keeping track of how many victory points you got compared to your opponent because that's the main goal is getting more victory points. And if you know you got three provinces and he's got three provinces, because we know there's eight to begin with. 
right? And you can buy that second to last province, right? That's not the play, isn't to buy this province. Because if your opponent can then buy the last one on the same turn, they're going to win. So the what you want to do is instead of buying a, a province, what you want to do is buy a duchy. Now, the reason you might say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. It's only worth half as much. Well, it now puts your opponent, you are now winning the game, right? You're now winning the game because you have more victory points. So if they buy this province and then you're able to buy the last province, you win the game. Because the game is over, it's no longer a tie. So when you buy this duchy, your opponent is going to be like, oh, wait, he, I'm now three points below him. And if I could buy this province, then he could buy the last province and end up winning because he's going to have this card and I don't have that. So I'm going to have to buy this card. And so you have what they call this the duchy dance going on with nobody wants to buy the second last province because if the game is tied going into the second last, whoever buys this province is going to lose the game because you don't want to be tied going into the last, the second last province. So you can see how this is playing out now. The game's progressing and they're buying things and they're doing things, but you're going to be keeping track. You know to win, right? You know to win right off the bat that if you got five provinces, you were going to win the game. There's, n I shouldn't say there's no way, but if you get five provinces, your opponent is going to be down 12 points, which means he's going to have to have a whole bunch of duchies or a whole bunch of gardens or a ton of estates. He's going to have to have a lot of extra cards. So you know... If I can get two up on my opponent, two up, then I I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm doing well, and I'm I should end up winning this. I should end up winning this game. So when you, when a game is close and it's going from back and forth, one 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 one, right? That's where you have to like, hmm, okay. So this is gonna this is gonna be a tight game. Hope oh, I'm gonna get one, and my opponent's gonna get one. Oh, wait a minute, maybe my opponent gets one, and then I get the last one. Then it's going to be a tie again, and whoever went second is going to win. So if you can get, right, so I get a province, right? Oh, instead of my opponent getting a province, I'm now two up. So if he might gets one, then I get one, and he gets one, and I get one. I'm always staying one ahead of them, and I end up winning. So there's a lot of strategy involved in knowing which, how, how to progress through the provinces, duchies, and estates that are available out there so that you end up with more than your opponent at the end of the game. If you can ever get two provinces up on your opponent, right, and he doesn't have any extra buys... Right, if you can only buy one one thing a turn. Now in this setup, we actually have the festival, which gives them plus one buy, which means I could be I could be two up on my opponent, and then he gets one, and then I get one. Right, and then my opponent buys the last two because he played a festival and he has enough money that he ends up buying. He maybe has sixteen money. He's got that extra buy. He could buy both of them. And then he's going to end up winning. So you got to watch. Watch what your opponent's doing. right? Find out how many buys he's getting. Watch how much money he's getting every turn. If he's getting 10 or 11 every turn, then you know he's only going to be able to buy one province. If he's getting like 16 or 18 or 20 gold every turn, you know he could buy two provinces. So being up by only you know, one province isn't enough. And there's only eight of them, right? So you could you could be up three provinces and your opponent could have like a super turn and buy like four of them, right? Or three of them or whatever, just to get right back into the game, depending on how long it takes his, his engine, his ability to buy cards to get it ramped up. 
sometimes it takes a lot more. You know, if you're just buying cards, right? Buying money cards, and then when you have enough money, you buy the better provinces. You're kind of you're kind of doing like you know the bell curve type thing where you're gonna it's gonna take you a while to go, and then you're gonna start buying pretty regularly until the game wins, right? Somebody else might be getting a lot of cards and actions where they're drawing a lot of cards and they're getting lots of cards and they're doing actions and they're going through their whole deck, but they don't have a lot of money. So it takes them a while to buy all these cards. So his bell curve is going to be straighter. And then eventually, oh, let's come up here so you can see. So his bell curve is going to be straighter, but then towards the end, he's going to get a, a bigger hump because his, his engine took a little bit longer to build. So the most important thing and part of the strategy is rem is knowing, okay, if I bought a province and my opponent brought a province, then we're still even. We know everything's even. If my opponent, if I buy a province and my opponent buys a province, we're still even. If I buy a province and my opponent discards one of his estates, right, because he trashes it because he's got the... Um, Oh, there's no trasher. We don't have a single trasher card in this. Well, well, we, I guess he couldn't trash this card because we don't have any trasher cards. But maybe I, my opponent bought, maybe my opponent bought a gardens. And now I'm like, oh, okay. So if it ends up going the rest of the distance, right? One, two, two, right? So I'm going to end up with four. My opponent's going to end up with four, but he's going to have this He's going to have this card on me. He's going to have that up on my, my amount. We're going to have the same amount, except for he's going to have this extra one. So in that case, I wouldn't want to buy the last province. In fact, I wouldn't want to buy the second last province. I'm going to, I know my opponent's up on me, right? So I would buy a duchy. Duchy is worth three. We don't know how much this card. It could be worth one. It could be worth two. It could be worth three. It could be worth four. It could be worth five. So the longer the game goes, the more this is going to be worth because the more more cards he's probably going to have in his hand. Most games in Dominion end between 20 to 25 cards in the hand. So this more than likely isn't going to be worth four or five. But again, if you're playing with more people, it could take a little bit longer to build up, to get things going. So, you know, you got to watch what your opponent's playing. you got to watch what your opponent's getting. If it's 3-3 three, three and I buy a duchy, if this guy buys the second last province and I get the last one, I win because I bought that duchy, which makes, which makes playing that, you know, buying that duchy such a smart move. If my opponent, if we're tied and he buys a duchy, then I can't buy this card. I mean, I could, but if I buy that card, then chances are he's going to buy the last one. He's going to win. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to duchy dance with him. And what happens at this point is people start buying all the duchies up. And you're trying to stay equal with one another because if, if he's able to get two duchies in a row, then he can start buying this last province. Why can he start buying that last province? Because if he buys this province and I buy this one, he's going to win because he's he's got two duchies on me. So there's a lot more strategy slash... Uh, what do we want to call it? Um, ability of understanding, right? So there's a limited amount of these, Right? There's a limited amount. There's eight of these. There's eight of these. We're playing two player. I know there's eight, eight, eight. And there's eight gardens out there. If I get, uh, my pony gets a, d a province, right? I know he's one up on me. If he gets a second province, like I said, maybe sometimes you're building a slower engine. It's going to take you a little bit while to ramp up. He's got a second province, right? Oh, he's got a third province now. I'm three provinces down. How, you know, am I going to be able to pull this out? Well, if you get a really good, you know, you can buy two one turn, right? And then your opponent buys one and then you buy two the next turn. You end up with four and four. Maybe you're, 
Maybe your stuff just takes a little bit longer to get up and running. So you always want to keep track of what your opponent's doing, how many, how much money he's got, what cards he's get, how many buys he's going to get, what kind of actions he can play. Is, uh, you know, there's a, a, a specific strategy on what they call big money, right? So there's big money where all you do is buy big money and then provinces when you can afford them. And a lot of people go, okay, well, uh, I can I can outthink that. I can outdo that. And you think it's really simple, but it's not because this is a very powerful thing. If you can, if you can buy just bigger money, and you can get uh, then afford the bigger cost item, you can get to that pretty quickly. It normally, I think on average, it's like nineteen point five turns. So every turn is drawing five cards, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So what you would do is you would buy four. You would only buy money. So I'd buy a silver. And then I draw again and I got three and I would buy a silver. So up to two turns. In fact, let's keep track. We can use a 20 sided. No, that's kind of dumb. Uh, sure, two turns. We'll just use and then I'm going to shuffle right boom, 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 boom. one two three four five and I got two four six well, look at that right off the bat within my this is our third turn I've already got six and I can buy myself a gold which costs six Right? So remember that. That was our third turn. We're already bought a gold. One, two, three, four, five. This time I have just three, so I buy another silver. One, two. Uh, so that was turn four. And two, four, five, six, seven. We're one short of getting a province already. Two, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to buy another gold. And that was turn five. Two, three, four, five, six. Oh, three, four, five, six, seven again. We're buying another gold. That was turn six. One, two, three. Four, five. We have only three, so we're going to have to get a silver again. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was uh, turn number seven. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? At turn, this is turn number eight. We're at nine gold already, so we can buy a province. One, two, three, four, five, three, six, seven, eight, nine. We're buying back to back provinces. That is, uh, I can't remember. Did I count the other one? Mm, it's either eight or nine. We'll go nine. I don't know if that was eight or nine. One, I can't remember. One, two, three, four, five. I'm buying three, four, five, six, seven. Can't afford a promise. I buy gold. That is turn ten. One, two, three, four, five. Two, four, six. I'm buying another gold. That is eleven. Two, three, four, five. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm buying another province. That is 12. One, two, three, four. Five. Three. I'm going to only buy silver this time. That is 13. One, two, three, four, five. 
three, six, seven, eight, nine. Bango, that's it. So four provinces, that's half the provinces, that is game over, right? So. Um, you know, that's half the province is bought. That is the half, that's the end of the game, basically, right? So the reason that's the end of the game is because if I buy another province, I'm going to be, I'm going to be up on you anyways. And by then you should have already bought yours. You see, we're only 14 turns in. Now that was very fast. That was very fast, uh, to get all the way to 14, half the provinces in the, in the deck already. So you look at... You look at um, you look at all these fancy cards out there, and you go, "Wow, I, I, I got, I can play all these fancy, fancy cards, or I can just buy all the better money and see if I can beat you that way." Because the money is always there. These cards are always, uh, they're always, um, it's always, uh, you know, random. So you're never sure. And this, of course, you can set up a certain deck. You know, it's not, doesn't have to be random. But you can see that, uh, okay, I can get up to, I can buy half the provinces in like 14 turns. Oops, you guys can't see that, but it was 14 turns. So can you beat that with playing some other combination of cards? Can you beat that by playing some other combination of cards? Well, let's try, right? So let's see if we can outduel the smart guy who's going to buy nothing but money and provinces and try to win before we are able to get our thing up and running and we're going to buy cards that seem to work together right so he, he will be player one we will play player two again it doesn't take him long to start buying better better cards better better cards then get to the big boys and just keep buying the big boys over and over and over again and if you can't be fast and quick enough with your stuff, then you're going to lose the game. So, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what he gets. He got four, so he's going to buy a silver. Let's see what we get. Come on, we got to do this. We can do this. I know we can do this. All right, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Give us the five, two combo. That would be great. Nope, we got the three, four combo. So we know we're getting a three, and then we know we're getting a four. So we should look at the three cards and the four cards and decide if we want to buy a three card and a silver or a four card and a silver. We're going to buy a silver with our three. All right. That's what we're going to do. He gets three. So he's going to buy another silver. So he's up to two silvers already. Oh, boy. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Oh, we get four. How about that? So we can go with the poacher, it gives us a card, an action, and a money. And we can discard a card for empty supply pile. Probably not going to be any because he's only going to buy golds and silver and provinces. And when this empties, it's going to be empty anyways. We can play a throne room to get an extra action from our hand twice. Uh, and we're going to go with the poacher because it's going to give us a card, an action, and a little bit of money. So that's what we're going to buy. So it's not a dead card. He gives us another card in an action. Let's see what he gets. He's going to get four. So he's going to buy a silver. Draw five. Oh boy. I'm nervous already. Can we do this? Hopefully we can do this. Uh, 
All right, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we get. So we got our poacher. We got two a silver and two copper in a state. So we'll play our poacher as our action. We get a card in action and a, and a dollar to spend. And our card is this copper. So we get plus one money. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we actually, because we are able to play this, we actually got a gold before he did. <laughs> Yay us. Two, three, four, five. Does that mean we're going to end up winning? I don't know. We'll see. Silver, silver, copper. He ends up with five. So five is not enough to get the gold, so he's going to have to buy another silver. One, two. I didn't have to buy that gold. And maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe we should have bought the witch instead. Hmm. No, I think getting a, that early gold will help us in the long run. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so let's see. Let's hope it does anyways. And then this turn, we only end up with three. We're going to buy with three. We're going to buy a village. We're going to buy a village, which gives us the card and two actions. So we've got a poacher with a card and an action and a village with a card and two actions. So we haven't bought any dead cards, meaning cards that we won't be able to play. Hopefully, anyways. My, we got one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's see what Big Money's doing over here. Big Money, Big Money, Big Money. Two... Three, four, five. He's got five again. That's a bad number for big money. They want to get six. He hasn't been able to reach six yet, so he's got to keep buying these silvers. Which is fine with me. <laughs> we got three, four, five. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We're going to play an action. Village, which gives us a card Ooh, and two actions. Well, we don't have any two more actions. Oh, well. But we have three, four, five, six. We're going to buy a witch. We're going to try and slow his deck down with the witch. Five. How is the witch? Because we're going to put curses in his deck. One, two, three, four, five. He's got two, three, four, five again. Boy, that is just bad luck on his. He just hasn't been drawing really good hands. Five again is another silver for him. One, two, three, four. Sooner or later, he's going to get that gold, though. So once he does, he's just going to jump in real quickly. Five, okay. Okay. Let's see what we got. We got the poacher. So we get plus one card, plus one action, and a dollar or money. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and two estates. We got a poacher, which gives us a card and an action. We got a village, which gives us a card and two actions. We have a witch that doesn't give us anything but cards. I'm going to bandit because it, it if Witch and the Bandit come out together, it's going to be a dead card. We're going to have to choose. But they're both attack cards. So no matter which one we choose, it's going to hurt them. So, And if we can get a Witch to come out with the Village, then we would have extra, uh, extra actions. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Come on. We can do this. We can beat him. Here he goes. Two, four, six, seven. So he buys his first gold. Boom. Here comes the hammer. 
Okay, we got to start getting some good cards against him now. Well, this turn is just four with an estates. Well, we don't have any actions to play, so we are going to play. Do we want another poacher? Or do we want another village? Village gives us lots of actions and another card. This gives us another card in action and more money. So we're going to get another poacher. That's to hopefully prevent the witch and the bandit to jump on together. He, uh oh, he's got back to back. Two, four, six. So he's going to buy another gold. He's starting to ramp up now. One, two, three, four, five. Oh boy, here we go. Come on now. Give us a good one. Our, oh yeah, there's going to be a good hand. So we're going to play the village first, which is going to give us a card and two actions. Unfortunately, we don't have two actions, but we do have a bandit. We are going to gain a gold. We're going to reveal the top two cards of our opponent's deck. We get to trash or any tr uh, trash, any revealed treasure other than coppers and discard the rest. These are his cards in his hand. So we're going to look at this card and then we have to shuffle his deck, which is good because he just got two gold. So maybe we can get one of these to come out on top. I am not cheating. I am shuffling up the best I can here. You cannot tell me I'm cheating. In fact, we will roll a die, and that will be how many cards we draw down to. Two. So one, two. There we go. So this is just one card on tap, and then this card. is. So these are his two cards. It is a silver and a stain. So trash to reveal treasure. So we get to trash his copper and discard the estates. So hopefully that might slow him down in the long run. Plus, we got a gold out of that. Now, we get to play the rest of our hand, which is three, four, five, six. That could be another gold piece if we wanted. We're going to play a throne room for four. We're going to buy a throne room for four. Two, three, four, five. That is our hand. Our opponent's not happy with us because we he just lost a silver, which is going to hurt him immensely. He has four copper, so he's going to buy a silver. One, two, three, four, five. It would have been great to get rid of that gold. That would have been awesome. Okay, so we're going to have interesting. So we have a poacher. So we have to draw a card. All right, so we got to draw a card. Draw. Well, it's in states. No big deal. Uh, we get uh, another action and a buck, or money. Whereas for our second action, we're going to play the witch. We get to draw two cards. One, two, which didn't end up. And each other player is going to get a curse. So he is going to gain a curse in his deck. Now, we are out of action, so we can't play our throne rooms. That was kind of a dead card for us, unfortunately. Which leaves us with one from the poacher, two, three. So we can only play three to buy. We're going to get another village, which will give us another card, but it'll give us two actions so we don't have that dead action thing going on. All right, player number one. Ooh, two, four, six, eight, ten. He will buy a province. So he is one up on us. That's a bummer. Ooh, look at our hand, though. Ha, 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 ha. So we are going to play a village, which gives us one card, two actions. So we'll draw a card. We will then play a bandit. So we will gain a gold. 
Each other player is going to reveal the top two cards of his deck. Again, he's only got one. We need to shuffle his second one. It's twice we had to do that now. And again, we will draw six cards down. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we'll just put these on the bottom. So that is the second one. We will reveal. And unfortunately, this is about the best he could have hoped for. We can trash any revealed treasures other than copper. But we get to discard those, which is actually going to help him because we got rid of two of his bad cards for him. Boo. Boo. All right, we did get a gold. Now we have three. Six, seven, eight, nine. We still only have one buy. There's only one card that gives us more than one buy, and that is the festival. We have nine. We do not want to fall behind him. So we are going to buy a province. So we know, just in our head, he has one, we have one. Right? So we can just remember that in our head. Let's see what he's got. Uh-oh. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, guess what? He's going to get another one. Oh, boy. One, two, three, four, five. So he's one up on us. This is not going great. We have a poacher, which gives us one card in action and a buck. You see how powerful big money is? It's not hard to play it, and it's pretty strong. Uh, and so cut, draw a card. Ugh. Well, we got a poacher into another poacher, which gives us two bucks now. And draw a card. And we still have an action. So we start with an action. We play that action. We gain an action. We use that action. We gain an action. So we still have one action. We are going to witch, which gives us two cards. Dang. But we're out of actions. Ah, these came out in the wrong order. But he is going to gain a curse. Take your curse and like it. So we don't have any more actions to play these cards, unfortunately. So we're going to gain one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is all we get out of that. Well, we're going to get a gold. I think we're going to buy a gold. We need a little bit more richer money. Okay, let's see what he's got. Oh my god. Two, four, six, eight. He's going to get another province. He is now two up on us, people. We're going to lose. Three, four, five. Uh, this turn is nothing but three, four, five, six. Six money. Hmm. <laughs> We're going to buy a festival. Gives us an extra buy. For five. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't know. We're going to see. Let's see what he can do. Oh, he's got a curse. He's got two silvers, a province, and a state. So you can see the provinces are starting to jam his deck up. And the curses are starting to jam his deck up. So it might help in the long run. So you can only buy a silver. One, two, three. Did we slow him down enough is the question. Hmm. If we can get that bandit to get rid of some of his gold, that would really help. One, two, three, four, five. All right, come on, what do we got here? We get a village, which gives us a card and two actions. Oh, that's the wrong time for this card to come out. So we have two actions left. We can throne room, but we don't have any actions to play. We have three, six, seven, eight. We're going to have to buy a province. Hmm. So he's only one up on us. One, two. Three, four, five. 
All right, let's see. Can he take the lead again? Oh, he can. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. He's back up to two on us again. Wow. Come on, we can win this. Maybe. Poacher, which gives us a card and an action. Come on. Which, which each other player draws a curse. And we get two cards. Come on, give us two good ones. That was two good ones. Three, uh, so we get three, six, seven, eight, nine from the poacher. We're going to buy a province. Wait. Oh, wait. So here we go. So here is our thing. So we have two left. He is two up on us. So it doesn't matter. We have to buy it and hope he can't buy that one. Right? We have to buy that one because he's two up on us. We have to get both of the last ones. If he gets that one, I think he's going to win. Let's see. Can he, can he afford that one? Let's see. Can he afford that one? He's got no. No. Two. Four. Five. No, he can't afford it. Wah, 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 wah. Which means he can only afford a silver. Oh, good. That gives us a chance. Because no, we know he's got curses in his hand. If we can get this, we would be tied in provinces. Because he has curses in his hand, we will win. And look at that. Actions through the roof. This is what we were hoping for. This is exactly what we were hoping for. Draw lots of cards. All right, we're going to village, which gives us two actions to play with and a card. Wow, nice. We are going to village, which gives us one card and an action. So we have... We've used two actions, so we have three actions remaining. We are going to we are going to throne room as an action where we may play a card from our hand twice. We are going to play the festival twice, which will give us four more actions, another buy twice, so we're going to get two buys, and we're going to get four, so we get to do this twice. So two actions, a buy, and two dollars. Two actions, a buy, and two dollars. So we're going to have like five or six actions remaining. We're going to have three buys, and we're going to have $4. And we're going to play the Bandit, which means we're going to earn a gold. We get to look at the top two cards of his deck. And if there's any treasure in them, which there isn't, we could, besides copper, we could, disc, uh, we could trash him. Unfortunately, once again, it didn't work that great. Uh, but we have two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have three buys, but we only need to buy this one, which means the game is over at this point right now because all the last province was bought. We will calculate up. We have... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see what we got here. Exactly what we thought we should have. We have four provinces and three estates because we weren't able to get rid of any of them. He, on the other hand, is going to have it's exactly what we think because we've been keeping track. He's going to have one, two, three, four provinces. He's going to have his three estates. 
And so it, that is tied right now, but unfortunately for him, wah, 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 he's going to have one, two, three, minus, minus three victory points. So he, since we have the exact same, but he has three minus victory points, we're going to win by three points. We have outdueled him by playing cards that work together to help us get to the end bigger and better and quicker in the long run than him. So and even though big money is a decent way to play the game and can be very fast to finish the game, it is obviously poacher can be outdueled by playing cards that you think will help one another work well with one another and are able to see the throne room probably shouldn't have bought that because it doesn't give us anything that allows us to play two cards from a hand so this this is probably a bad buy for us we could have spent the four money on something else that could have probably like another poacher which was another action another card and an extra dollar uh, obviously those villages came in handy in the last hand so we were fortunate that he wasn't able to buy that last hand and uh, then uh, it gave us a chance to to win this so I mean things could have come out differently we might have been able to buy that last one and he could have ended up winning which was a possibility but we were two provinces down with two left so if you're two down with two left, you have to buy this one, right? And then you got to hope he can't buy it. And so you can buy the last two. We had a strong enough deck. You know, we were, uh, our deck took a little bit longer to get going. And then it really started to ramp up there at the end. But you can see how quick the game goes. I mean, it's it's done and over with in just a few matter of a few minutes. So that makes every single time you buy something, right? Every single card you buy, ultra important is this card going to help your deck how is it going to help your deck which five gives us extra cards but if we have oh, two witches we can only play one of them so this is a dead card do we want to buy another one of these well obviously if we buy this right right and you have these three cards you can play the village which gives you an extra card plus two more actions you can play a witch, and then you can play another witch. So, how many dead cards you have with the cards that work with it? This doesn't give us any money, though. Right? So, this card gives us money, but it also gives us only one card and only one action. So, you have to really think and kind of focus your strategy on certain things. Probably, I was a little bit too... You know, I bought this, probably shouldn't have bought this, probably should have bought another poacher instead, or maybe another village. You want to kind of focus on a combination that works well together. Fortunately, we knew our opponent wasn't going to attack us, so we didn't have to buy any moats, because he was just going to go for big money. And, uh, you know, and then we were able to use the bandit. It didn't help us in the long run. I've seen bandits do, you know, great things but in our case he kept popping up estates and coppers which don't do anything but you can imagine right if your opponent's got two gold right and you flip up you know two top two cards and they're two gold with the bandit and you did to trash both of the both of his big money cards that is going to severely hurt him severely hurt him so you definitely bandits work well against people that are Buying big silver and gold cards, a lot of them. Which, you know, it just clogs up their deck a little bit. It's only minus one victory point. But, you know, that was the difference in the game right there was she probably should have bought her. Remember that first gold I bought? And I said, hmm, probably should have bought a witch instead. Might have been better to buy the witch at first and then the gold. But we had six, so it's hard to give up. It's hard to give up that gold. 
Alrighty, that is a look at the intro to the cards that come in the base set, how to set the game up, how, what games, uh, what cards are included in the base set, um, basic flow of the game, and understanding the victory points, right? And understanding that you don't always just buy provinces. If it's equal, if all things are equal, you don't maybe necessarily buy the second last province because if you do that and you're the first player, then your opponent can buy one and you can end up winning, right? So then you have to think, okay, there's two provinces left. Now, if you're down two provinces, if your opponent has four and you only have two, then you have to buy both and hope that you can get both of them. Right, so lots of strategy with that. But if it's if all things are equal and you have three and your opponent has three, right, and you got enough to buy a province, you might want to buy a duchy, right? Because then if he buys a province, you buy the last one, you win, because you have three more points than he did. If you buy a duchy, then he has to buy a duchy. Well, then it back on you, and then you got to buy a duchy. And then you start doing the, what they call the duchy dance, right? Who's going to be the first one to break away? And, of course, this is where, towards the end of the game, if you have cards that give you multiple buys, right? There's nothing better than, oh, we're tied, right? And you say, okay, and you put enough money out, and you have an extra buy that you go, okay, I'm going to buy a duchy and a province. Well, now... You bought that, right? Because now you're a duchy up on your opponent and he's got to buy this card, which means he can't buy this one unless he can buy both of them. And so you know your opponent maybe can't come up with, what is that, 13 money. Maybe you can only come with up with 8, 9, or 10. You haven't seen a 13. Getting a 13 is pretty hard. So anyways, uh, a lot of strategy, a lot more than people think, a lot more involved in what to do, when to do, how to do it, and to be the best at it. That's the that's the main thing is be the best at it because you gotta you gotta be better than your opponents, whether you're playing one or two player, three player, four player, five player, six player. You gotta be the best of the best, right? And how do you be the best of the best if you want just witches and bandits or do you go with more actions and card draw laboratories? Cards and actions, villages, cards and actions, cards and actions, cards and actions, village laboratory, village laboratory, village laboratory, village laboratory. And that would make it so that like when it's your turn, you're like, okay, play, draw a bunch of cards, play a card, draw a bunch of cards, play another card, draw a bunch of cards. And pretty soon you're drawing like your whole deck of hand, your whole deck. Right? If you're drawing your whole deck, you only need a couple gold and, a, you know, two gold and a silver is enough to get you a province. If you're drawing your whole deck, you only need to have those three cards in your hand. Right? You can have a bunch of draws and a bunch of actions. Draw, action, draw, action, draw, action. You're drawing all your cards. You only need two gold and a silver. That'll get you a province. All right, so that is the basic overview. Next time we'll look at, uh, talk about uh, intrigue and what it brings into the system and uh, show you some of the cards there. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, uh, let me know. Uh, always looking for advice. Uh, if I miss something, if you have any thoughts, if you didn't understand anything, let me know. And I will be more than happy to answer your question. All right, guys, until then, next time, thanks for watching, and everyone have a great night, and we'll see you next time.